Welcome to the Risk Forever channel guys, channel which shares the most relevant tips and tricks on how to win at risk, and improve your rank in no time. Subscribe to the channel and you won't even see how fast you will become so much better at risk. Push that notification bell to see new videos first. This is your host champion ever. And today we are playing 4 player fixed card game on classic risk map. Settings, Alliance is on. Balance Blitz dice rolls in 60 seconds per turn. I'm playing on my alternative account called Annette Alvarez 11, intermediate rank at the time of recording, I'm the red player in this game. This time I'm playing against two intermediate rank players who are orange and yellow, and even one master rank player who is blue. This time I will be going for North America, so wish me best of luck guys. I find North America extremely hard to capture. I think people see North America as the best continent so they will prevent you of capturing it if possible, there is almost always South American player who tries to prevent me of capturing North America, or if not, then I could possibly expect to be invaded either from Australian or European players. But hopefully this time I will have a better luck, so keep your fingers crossed for me guys. In the beginning of the game I had two different options of which continent I should go for. Most of my troops were in North America and Europe continents. So I could go for either of these continents. But the reason why I decided to go for North America, is because the orange player with the setup she got, had almost all of that continent captured. So since she went for South America, I didn't want that she would have gotten North America soon as well. The least I wanted that she would have gotten the dominating position instantly. So to prevent that of happening I decided to go for North America, starting to add troops there, and potentially capturing it later on in the game if players let me hold it. I really hope the orange will move her troops out of North America so we could be friends. I think I made it very obvious that I'm going for North America. And wow, come on orange, come on pal. How dare you to attack even four troops of mine. That is not appreciated at all. Well, that's fine I guess. It seems I will have to be without a continent at all, the orange player has clearly showed that she won't let me capture North America, so I should stop going for it, as if I won't stop, then my troops will just simply get crushed. Especially if I continue splitting them into multiple different armies. It's always easier to take down multiple smaller armies rather than one big army. Well, at least when it comes to balance blitz games. So this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to build all of my troops to one big army. This is the strategy I use when I cannot get a continent. I build my troops into one big army either in a neutral place, or in a place which would prevent the strongest player of capturing an additional continent which would give him a good, additional amount of troops, if I see it is needed to be done for the balance of the game. In this situation it isn't needed, but I still have some hopes to capture North America. It seems the yellow player is not satisfied with Africa alone, so he is going to get Europe as well. So after he captures it, then the orange player might stop paying all of the attention to me and start focusing on the yellow player instead. As you saw the yellow player sent me an alliance request and I gladly accepted it. I mean in such terrible position I'm currently in, I would accept alliance requests from anyone, La la la. Come on orange and blue, send the alliances my way as well, lol. Well, the yellow player most likely sent me an alliance request only because I wouldn't attack him into Europe after he captures it, but I mean I wouldn't attack him anyways, by being the weakest player and so low on troops, the least thing I want to do is to attack anyone lol. But what I like about the alliance with the yellow player, is that he might not try taking me out. By being the weakest player I have the highest chances to be eliminated first, there's a huge possibility that I won't be the player who is needed for the balance of the game to be sustained at all. So the players could potentially look to eliminate me from the game. But since the yellow player made an alliance with me, he probably doesn't really have that in the plans, and that is so good to know. And wow, come on blue, what in the world are you doing? Stop your nasty behavior please. Why are you so mean to me, your action of clearing me out of Asia drastically hurts my feelings. I cannot believe the cruel world I live in. 
I'm of course just joking around guys. Actually it was smart for the blue player to clear out me from Asia. He wanted that I would be eliminated either by orange or yellow by basically leaving me in one place of a map with one not very big army. So I had no other choice but just to trade in a set at 4 cards only getting 6 troops. To not trade in a set for me would have been very dangerous and dumb. Well, but I mean I still have a small army of 26 troops anyways, so there is a pretty big chance that I will be eliminated soon anyways, it will just take some more turns. Well, but who knows how will it actually go, it's possible that I can survive and be alive as well. So let's see how it goes guys. Well, maybe the blue player just wanted to go for Asia, rather than trying to get rid of me I guess. As in the last turn he didn't fully remove me from Asia, I still had India territory. But anyways, he just finished capturing Asia, but the biggest question of them all is whether the players will let him hold it. Hmm. And lol guys. I've just got two alliance requests, one from orange and one from blue. I'm of course gladly accepted both of them lol. But the paradox is that the orange player wants that I would attack blue, while the blue player allied with me because I wouldn't attack him. So what should I do guys? What do you think? Well, I think it's pretty obvious that by being the weakest player having quite less troops than anybody else, I should stay away from the conflict at any cost. The yellow and blue are the players who are the strongest ones here, getting insane amount of troops by holding all of these continents. So the players who should fight are they? While I along with the orange player should stay neutral and do not get involved in it at all. Unless it will be needed, but for now they are perfectly balancing each other out. None of them is becoming much stronger than another one, they're getting pretty much the same amount of troops, and if they want they could easily invade each other at any time they want. And wait a minute. Did the yellow player disconnect? Like why, why in the world you would disconnect having such position? Not a small amount of players disconnect when they get completely crushed or when it's been over a few hours and the game got bored. But in this case the game just basically started and the yellow player is being one of the strongest players. So it's very strange to see he disconnected. Well, I know some players disconnect for a few turns, or pretend to be disconnected, and then suddenly come back to the game, after players crushed each other so they get a very easy win. But I don't know why you would disconnect being in such a good position like yellow. So maybe he just ran out of battery or so, or maybe has some internet connection issues, who knows. Well, I think it's maybe even better that he disconnected, as the blue player won't get to hold Asia anymore, he will get invaded by yellow, so the bot will take care of the blue player if we can say so. So the blue player isn't going to become too strong. Well, assuming the bot won't be dumb enough to still let him hold basically from its side unguarded Asia, well, at least when it comes to Middle East border. And OMG guys, OMG guys. I cannot believe that the orange player decided to kamikaze herself on the yellow bot. That wasn't very smart at all. It is probably the best thing that could have happened to Blue. While two real players continue crushing bot, he can continue getting strong. La la la. Don't you never ever waste your troops on the bot, while one of your opponents has the dominating position and is about to win the game low. Like look guys, the blue player has the same amount of troops as I and the orange player combined, so he can totally afford taking both of us out. As remember guys, we don't treat the computer players in the same way we treat out real opponents. After you defeat your real opponents, it's always easy to deal with the bots. So do not drastically waste your troops on them when one of the players has the same number of troops as you and another real player combined, and especially if he holds Asia or any other continent which gives him a ton of troops low. So anyways, as you can see I took care of the blue player by invading him into Asia. Thank god he didn't have a big army from the North America side. The orange player is very lucky that she is playing with me. Otherwise the blue player could have totally dominated the game by having Asia, as the orange player after invading yellow into Africa didn't even care to go a little bit further and invade the blue player as well. So if I hadn't invaded blue by myself, then he would have totally gotten this game. 
Anyways, as you can see the blue player sent me a thumbs down emoji, showing that he doesn't appreciate the invasion into Asia at all. Well, I'm pretty sure he understands, that if nobody invaded him back then, then he would have totally won this game. So no blue, your manipulation of alliances isn't going to work. Alliances are only good when they benefit both of the players, and when alliance becomes only one-sided, then it must end. Risk isn't a team game, so everyone stands for himself or herself. Even if you have an alliance with one of the players, you cannot let him dominate the game like that. You should always play to win. As only in this way you will get the best from the game you can, I'm talking about the experience and skills. And if you're suiciding or just playing for the second place because the only thing that you care is your rank, then you aren't going to learn as much. Anyways, as you can see the blue player just stupidly wasted on the yellow bot, rather than taking out the orange player. Like after taking out the orange player, he would have dealt with me easily as well. So I'm really happy to see what he blundered the game like that lol. I'm glad that I along with orange still have the chances to win. And OMG guys, I cannot believe the orange player has just saved my life. The blue player built a big army next to me and was about to take me out of the game. Wow guys, the orange player is a true hero and always be remembered in our hearts. Well, you're probably wondering why I didn't invade the blue player into Europe if I knew he was about to take me out. Well, this is because I thought that the orange player with the troops she gets will attack the orange player into Europe and try taking lots of additional territories by herself. It was really unexpected for me that she decided to crush one of the biggest blues armies, so if I knew that she is going to take that army down instead of capturing as many blues territories as possible, then I certainly had invaded the blue player into Europe by myself. So now it's so bad that the blue player got so many additional troops. I really wish I had invaded him. And wow guys, the orange player is getting completely crushed. And that is so bad. Well, this time I'm not letting the blue player have all of that stuff for sure. Let's invade him into Africa and Europe. Well, to be honest additionally I could have captured a lot of blues territories as well. But I think the orange player is completely safe, the blue player won't have enough troops to take her out so nothing to worry about. But wow guys. I didn't take into the account that the blue player could have gotten a set at 3 cards. So now he completely can take the orange player out. Wow guys. I cannot believe myself. I messed up so badly. That was very dumb of me of not capturing lots of blues territories as well. So now he is having a very big advantage in the end game against me. But oh well. Mistakes happen, I'm still going to try my best. At least I was smart enough to invade his continents, so his advantage isn't as big as it could have been. So I still have a little hope. Let's hope he doesn't have a set at 4. That would really help to equalize our power. But of course he does have a set guys. And not a simple one, but even a 10 troops set. And that means that I completely lost this game. Like look guys at out troops difference. It's too big. Well, of course I will trade in a set, but nothing much I can do anymore I'm afraid. It will be one of my final attacks before I get completely crushed. But OMG guys, OMG guys. I cannot believe that the blue player didn't fortify his biggest army out of Australia, out of the blocked place if we say in other words. He just made the biggest mistake of his life. It's the biggest mistake you can ever do in the endgame by keeping your biggest and only one army blocked. Especially in Australia, as in that case your opponent can use the Four Continents endgame strategy against you, it's the strategy when you capture both of the Americas, Africa and Europe, and only have three borders to guard. You place your armies in Middle East, Ukraine and Kamchatka. And since your opponent has his army blocked in Australia, he cannot invade you anyhow so you get a lot of troops, potentially getting the advantage over him. As you can see I'm using the simplified version of the Four Continents Endgame strategy. I captured all of the four mentioned continents, but I didn't have troops to guard the three mentioned borders. But since the blue player only received six troops, 
he was only able to invade two of my continents. And to my surprise instead of invading Europe plus North America, he decided to invade Europe plus Africa, additionally unblocking my 7 troops army low. Well, it's of course very sweet of you Blue. But I think you have just given me a victory. And lol, don't send me angry face emojis blue, it's your own fault that you failed, and no one else's. Like literally guys, I couldn't believe that I was going to win this game in a losing situation, while the blue player is going to lose in a winning one. After the blue player took the orange player out and still had quite more troops than me, I thought I had no chances to win anymore against him. But wow guys, this is what happens when your opponent leaves his biggest army blocked in Australia, even if it's only for one or two turns. The four continents endgame strategy is OP and can give you an easy win in a losing situation. The strategy is so useful. But wow, what a game guys. It was very intense one, and I literally won without having any continent at all during the entire game, if we don't count the endgame. But anyways, let's check my rank right quick guys. Wow, 6 wins in a row. That is so nice. As always, special shout out goes to the members of the Risk Forever channel. Thank you very much for supporting the channel. If you guys enjoyed watching this video, then I would recommend checking some of these out as well. Watching more videos will help you progress so much faster.